It could be a fire, it could be an earthquake, um, some kind of situation where you can't just get down the stairs. We have an emergency ladder. Mm. Um, on, we have a balcony at the front of the house. Uh -huh. um, and then windows out the back. And windows out the back, Ooh. so that uh, if emergency you ladder can be hung true. over a window ledge or something like that, or over the um, balcony rail. Mm -hmm. And it provides a means of getting down from the second floor to the ground floor. Yeah. The piece that I, a piece I want to uh, talk about is, is if you have to get out of the house, mm. you know, that you, right. you have a kit for that for some situations. Yes. You know, grab and go is one way, but I want to talk about your second story kit. Mm. Is that the right thing in mm -hmm. case of an earthquake and yes. you can't get, mm -hmm. so talk to us about, or sh show us too. Well, f I'll just start off by saying that um, what the recommendation is, again, um, one of the key um, injuries in an earthquake situation is glass. It's broken glass. It's cuts mm -hmm. caused by that. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. if you're in bed at night, I mean, if, if you're up during the day, you may be close to a sturdy pair of shoes and other things, but if you're in bed at night, you're oftentimes barefoot. You don't have a, a heavy pair of shoes there. You certainly don't have any other protective equipment. So the recommendation is that you have underneath your bed or near your bed where you can easily reach it, a good sturdy pair of boots, uh, a, a nice heavy pair of leather gloves mm -hmm. to deal with the glass. That's right, to deal right. with the glass, and right. then and then a hard hat and oh. safety glasses, so that you can protect yourself. And when you're going out and exploring whether or not your house is safe, if your other loved ones are all right, you're not going to put yourself in harm's way, or you're going to be able to protect yourself because you don't want to be injured. While and then you're trying, trying to help, help somebody, somebody else. Oh, That's sure, right. sure. Right. So, so I just wanted to lay, mm -hmm. lay that out then. Well, I think um, one of the things that will happen is that lots of cupboard doors go flapping open and shut, so lots of crockery, lots of glassware, things like that will generally get thrown to the floor mm. um, and produce uh, quite a significant hazard. I can attest to that. Robin mm -hmm. and I were in the 19, um, I believe it was 89, 89 the, major, yeah. the major quake, yeah. and mm. we were within a quarter mile of the fault line, mm. Mm. and indeed, you know, in the kitchen, you know, we didn't lose a lot, but the doors did come open. Some glassware did come out. Right. Yeah. My grandmother was closer to it, and all her good glass yes. broke. Right. So it's your right to be right. ready to deal and, with and glass. Yeah. At any time of day, but certainly at night time, you know, you are going to be barefoot. You're going to want um, your torch with you as well. Yes, so exactly. beside the bed. We've all, we've all got a, one of those headlamp torches by, uh, by the bed. By the bed. I think those are so. In mm, our bedside table. They're really yes. handy. So that you've Maybe got immediate free. light and you've got your hands free. Uh, you've got a pair of work gloves each, um, a pair mm -hmm. of boots each, and a hard mm -hmm. hat each. And also, um, it could be a fire, it could be an earthquake, um, some kind of situation where you can't just get down the stairs. We have an emergency ladder. Mm. Um, on, we have That's a balcony at the front is. of the house. Uh -huh. um, and then windows out the back. And windows out the back. Ooh. So that uh, if emergency you get ladder downstairs, can be gotcha. hung over a window ledge or something like that, or over the um, balcony rail. Mm -hmm. And it provides a means of getting down from the second floor to the ground floor. Yeah. Um, rather than jumping and yes. risking breaking yeah. a leg yes. or we're something like that. We're effectively upstairs three floors up because mm. we've got an above, above ground yes, basement. You do. Yes, yes above. you do. Yes, you do. We're quite tall. So, this, so you can get a fold, uh, well, a folded down ladder that would, would extend almost, almost, a story, almost, almost a story and a half? Yeah, almost. it's two stories. It's, oh, okay. it's a two-story okay. ladder, so we'd still have to jump at the bottom, but, but at least we're closer. Least that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Now, yeah. one of the things that, thank you. That's that's because I want people to think about that who 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 can you mm -hmm. know do that the middle of the night um, mm. scenario. You've also got a reminder and about your, your little grab and go little uh, oh, carrier right. things, yeah. particularly for seniors. Obviously, six or five well, or six okay, or seven this baby up here. Five there or six or seven plastic tubs is is fine if you They're are able to go heavy. with your car, right. say, or are camping in place, whatever, right. or just on your lawn or whatever. 
but some that's not going to be true everywhere no. for everybody and so and if you're injured as well it's going to be course, very difficult and you're only you're limited in how much you can carry on your back mm -hmm. or over your shoulder mm -hmm. so this allows you to provide you, you can carry food in this you can mm -hmm. carry other sorts and of it's got wheels kit. it's got wheels so it takes all nice, the weight nice big so bag a, a it's, shopping bag yeah, it's, it's a shopping simple bag. shopping yeah. And we've got a couple of these, so... Um, so that a couple of people can carry That's right. It some really of extends stuff. our ability to move things out of here and out of here mm -hmm. quick. Or transport I, I things think around. it's foldable. So, I can see that. Yeah, That's no, great. It's, really, it's foldable. Yeah. Now, do you also have, like, a backpack or a rucksack or something that you could carry? On your, yeah. If you're strong yes. and healthy, yeah. you can yeah. carry that on your back with yeah. some stuff as well as this. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just wheeling down. <laughs> well, you could do two of those. I mean, you could actually do it as well with a suitcase, but suitcases aren't nearly as sturdy and it's oh, a little bit more difficult. Oh. But those, I would certainly say any suitcase could be adapted as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, carrying the carrying out with a roll of wheels. wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, yeah. that's also kind of true. I know that there are bins like that with wheels and handles so right. that mm -hmm. that could help also. I mean, any, right. so think, think that you have to move. I think that's part yeah, of the and picture. And also, you know, I mean, a lot of people are, are stretched and it's not, you know, you can't can't go out and buy all this. Oh, I mean, yes. we've been collecting oh, yes. for years now. Yes, yes. that's um, fair. And it, so there are a lot of things that you could repurpose that you already have that would certainly fill the mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of helping <coughs> you prepare. And I would add that thrift stores are probably Absolutely. going to be a wonderful source for some yeah. of this mm -hmm. material. It's Especially a lot some of, the of clothes, luggage. Like, yeah, yeah, and extra, the, extra, the extra yeah. clothes and shoes and so that's on. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to neighbors in just a second. Okay. But I just want to mention that you had brought out several books that you use, let me just ask, are these books that you are, are part of your kit? So that, or are they how to do your kit prepared? Right. I mean, tell, what are they about? Absolutely, they do help. Um, each one has a little bit different of a fo different focus. There's a, a family guide. Um, Matt Stein's books are great. I've really when appreciated that strikes, when, when technology ass. fails, yes. when disaster strikes, because he gives you a lot of, you know, how do you put the pieces back together again, mm -hmm. and how do you make do if you don't have. Um, mm -hmm essential kit. Right. Um, some of the others are more about, you know, helping walk you through the, you know, what do you need to go into the kit and what kind of training is, is, is also okay. um, a good addition to have. Great. Good. So, Thank you. Thank you for that. And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of resources online. Oh, there well. have to be just, look, I mean, it's just sort of filtering yeah. through. But and there's I, a whole preppy movement too, which is oh, another. Yes. <laughs> are you preppers? <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a You're tendency to that, but uh, Tim's not quite along the same line. You just are one without naming that, <laughs> Tim. So the the piece that we I want I know we want to get back to is you can't do this. I mean, your neighbors are affected just like mm. you are. And so talk to us about you know, you've got your little bubble taken care of somewhat. What about your neighbors here in terms of what can they give and what will they need? Yeah, well, the, you, you need to take care of your neighbors, and it may be that your neighbors can take care of you as well. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know necessarily which houses are going to stand up, which houses are going to fall down, and so on and so forth. And I think the sense of community, particularly within a street, let's say, one block or so, um, it's very important that you need to have some kind of an idea. Uh, are there old people? Are there disabled people? Are there children? Etc. Etc. In particular, people that will definitely need help uh, immediately after a, a big catastrophe. Uh, and what can you do to help them? But also, what resources are there on the street? As Anne mentioned, mm -hmm. there's a nurse that lives down the road. There may be other resources. There may be physical resources, like maybe somebody has a chainsaw. Sure. Um, sure. And so on and so forth. Um, there's a um, system called Map Your Neighborhood, which Anne knows very well, and we've tried it um, on our local street level, uh, where everybody gets together and um, you map the resources uh, mm -hmm. on your street. Like this person has construction tools, or right. yes. right. they stay, store water, or whatever. Yeah, and right. maybe there's an and engineer. Also what their needs are. Uh, um, maybe there's a nurse. Special needs. Um, mm -hmm. Are there special needs? Right. Um, are, is there equipment in the street that could help if if there's lots of fallen down buildings and things mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very useful tool as well as a very good way of building community, local community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's important. Uh, if you don't know what your neighbours have got and they don't know what you've got and they don't, maybe they don't even know you, uh, maybe when your house falls down they're not going to be there rummaging away looking for you. Right. Um, right. Whereas if you all know each other and you talk to each other and you've helped each other in the past, 
um, when the disaster strikes, um, everybody's going to muck in together and try and help each other. Mm. I think that's going to be a really reassuring resource, if you will, mm -hmm. if you know that you're not at this alone mm -hmm. and, you, you know, you, you've got your hard hat on and you can go out and check right. the neighbor. It right. occurred to me, as you spoke, that part of the training, I would imagine, in, in a household and in the neighborhood, but starting with the household, is knowing how do you shut off the gas? Right. How do you mm -hmm. shut off the electricity? Right. If the water lines are broken, where do you shut off? You know those Absolutely. connections. Yeah. And I would imagine you, you know you have a daughter. She's a teenager. She would need to know those things. If she were home at mm -hmm. the time, and neither mm -hmm. of you were, for example, she would need to know those things. Right. So do you have a rehearsal? Well, um, I, I mean, I think the it's it's a really critical what you what you just talked about. I mean, we're very similar to San Francisco in the sense that we're wooden houses mostly, and we have very high penetration of natural gas as our primary heating, or we use we're we're piped in with natural gas, and so fire is actually one of our largest ah, risks. Okay. So, okay. one of the one of the pieces of this um, program is is mapping where your gas mains are or your gas your shutoff valves are for each of the houses that are on your neighborhood. On your street. Oh. Because I see. Your neighbors may or may not be there, but if you do sense that there's gas um, escaping from one of those, then you really do want to shut it off mm -hmm. because if their mm -hmm. house goes up in flame, it's very likely that it'll that's pass right. on sure. to. Sure. So that's going to be one of our key, especially in that first couple of hours after the earthquake. It's going to be the fire and managing the fire. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having an idea about how to do the gas shut off and an idea about where the gas meters are is really. Sure. It really sure. enhances your ability to respond quickly. Have you found your neighbors to be pretty, you know, up positive or responsive to the, the idea of getting together to do this? It's there's a there's a great de degree of interest, and we have had some really good response um, at a community level. It's a little bit slower. People are just they're so busy, and there's so much going on yeah. in their lives, sure. and they sure. really, you know, you know, one more thing to add in, but. But there is an awareness here that we really do need to do something to prepare ourselves because we are on our own in the event there's a yo-yo, you're on your own. Oh, um, yes, you know, yo -yo. So we, we really can't count on the, mm -hmm. the first responders as much as they'd like us to be able to. They even they recognize also that they just don't have the capacity sure. to deal with all of, you know, their focus is going to be on some critical resources and we're in a have a little bit of a more remote suburban mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and, and we're just not going to get that mm -hmm. support. So. Mm -hmm. The only thing we can count on is, is who's here. So the more we can think about it and talk to each other and work with each other, the better off we're going to be, the more effective we're going to be. You guys have done a lot. I mean, I'm really impressed. It's like all, all <laughs> the levels of, of careful thinking, you know. And, and what I get is that it's not, or something that you said, it's not just out of fear. No, no. No, it's out of love, really. I mean, it's being able to take care of yourself. It's that ability to respond to times of need. And, and actually, it comes out in people. We've seen that so many different yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. People just want to help, and they want to be good neighbors. And so it would be a little bit better if we thought through some of the details before it happens rather than after it happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, one mm -hmm. of the problems is how do you coordinate all that outpouring of, of people's energies yes. and efforts? Yes. So the more that we can prepare beforehand, the much easier it's going to be not just to get through the actual disaster, but then to recover quickly. Uh -huh. Which get we back into sort of talk normal. About That's get right. Get things back to normal. Right. Get things back up and running again. Hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Right. Now there's a... There's a topic. A timely <laughs> reminder. Um, <laughs> Lots of people have pets. Uh, we have a kitty. And you got to think about your pets in mm, the face yeah. of a disaster as well. Um, do you have some food uh, for them, uh, mm -hmm. water for them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you have a means, in the case of a cat, perhaps of restraining them for a while because they'll be very scared oh, and worried? Yeah. Uh -huh, certainly. Um, so maybe a, a typical pet cage or something yeah. like that right. to put them in to keep them safe and to, you know. Uh, let them calm down a bit after, after yeah, the disaster. You wouldn't, I mean, I know that the, the challenge of cats and dogs that are abandoned, and mm. it's like, it, right. which breaks your heart, and, and leaves them vulnerable to all kinds of terrible conditions as well. That's right. And also many people are so attached to their animals that they mm. won't leave without them. Ah. So they, they, they stay in danger because they have no... You know, so if they had a means to carry their pet with right. them in their little, in their little cart right. or whatever, then, then they're safer yes. as well as their, their, their companion. Yes, I like that. 
Anything else? I mean, there's a million things we could talk about, but are there any <laughs> major things that it's we haven't start. talked about? It's a good start. It's a good Hit start. I think, I think that's a good start. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good start. We all think it's a good start. We hope you do too. You're watching Peak Moment. I'm thanking Tim and Anne and Princess, Princess. for yeah. being a part too. of preparation and hopes that uh, you and your neighbors will prepare for the emergency you hope doesn't happen. Mm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Peak Moment, and that was a cat. Yeah. Bye, cat. Join us next time. <laughs>